I think it's how you bounce back from disappointment and failures. You know, how you recover and how you move on. Um, so there's always those challenges. And if I go through my career, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of disappointments. There's a lot of things that didn't go right. But it's, those aren't the things that make you. It's how you bounce back and where you move on from there and how you, what you learn from those things. And, you know, it's kind of the river flows. You know, you, you have to make choices on where your life goes. But you never stop flowing. You never stop riding the river. You never stop dancing. You know, so I just think you kind of keep pushing forward. Because you're going to have disappointments. You're going to have problems in your life. You're going to have different things that go wrong. But that's not what's going to define you. What's going to define you is how you recover from those things and how you move on. In our country, we have a great ethos that the wise old men will spend an incredible amount of time giving you free advice and mentorship. As you pointed out, I started trading my dorm room. I started Citadel right out of college for all intents and purposes. Never worked on Wall Street. And yet I had some of the best Wall Street training anyone in the world had. It was my sales coverage at Bear Stearns, sure. my friend at Drexel who gave me advice, my friend at Merrill Lynch who would let me come into the office and go through their research reports and their analysis, my friend at Lehman Brothers who let me sit on the stock loan desk and understand how the securities lending market worked. You would be amazed by just asking how much people who you respect will share their time and insights with you. Just pick up the phone, send a letter, make a trip. Well, I think the first thing is really to ask yourself, do we, do we have a mission? I actually happen to believe that as an individual, as a person, I don't need to have a mission, but a company needs to have a mission besides making money. I, I don't want to go into like the, the trite area of, oh, let's make the world better, but you, you have to really define what problems you're trying to solve. Is there a societal problem? Is there a customer problem that you're trying to solve? That's your mission, all right? And you have to be laser focused on it. Because as you scale, you go from 200 people, people to 2,000 people to 20,000 people. If not everybody is singing to the same tune, it's very, very easy to get distracted. So that's, that's number one. I mean, going back to what we built, um, we, in some ways, solve a problem, right? People had problems communicating when they were not in the same room, uh, when they were in different cities or in different countries or in different time zones. And so it's not that it wasn't impossible. It's just it was hard and it was expensive, and we made it easier and cheaper. And when you offer something to people that is easier and uh, cheaper, people, of course, will, will use it. So I think the number one thing to look at for me, when I look at a product, does it solve a need and doesn't solve a need on a global scale, right? If you solve a need for people on Stanford campus, that's great, but can it scale to a billion or two billion people? The culture of uh, the tech industry, especially Silicon Valley, where um, you, you know, it's kind of romanticized to like just be working 24-7. You'll hear people say they were up two nights in a row, you know, finishing this project, things like that. Um, and it's easy to sort of uh, get this idea that, that that's the optimal way to work, that's the way to get the most done. Um, but when you talk to people that are further in their career, if you look at any of the research that's been done about this, you get the exact opposite conclusion, where you really have to treat it um, much more like a marathon, and really pace yourself and work in a sustainable way. Um, so, you know, I started Facebook when I was 19, so uh, you can do that for a couple years, especially when you're young, but eventually you're going to burn out, eventually you're going to slow down. Um, and so a, a few years in, I was, I was sort of, you know, starting to feel that and it was starting to cost me. Um, so the, the blog post I wrote is uh, Work Hard, Live Well, it's on Medium, uh, and I just talk about, uh, you know, better patterns for, uh, for how to build, uh, you know, s sustainable habits. And it, it's, it's at every, every scale of abstraction, right? You have to take breaks during the day, you have to go home and rest at night and sort of unplug. Uh, you have to use your weekends, you have to take vacations, uh, and over, after a few years, ideally, you can take some time off between jobs or take a sabbatical. Um, that's really the way to keep going. Uh, and a lot of the people, um, you know, that I've seen in, in startups or coming from Facebook, they, they didn't learn these lessons and they burnt out and, and frankly some of them stopped working for years at a time or, or just retired early.